Hello, and welcome to another lesson in which I am going to test your vocabulary and see just how much you know when it comes to some very useful and common English phrases. And the, the reason why I say useful and common is because these are all more upper intermediate phrases, B2 phrases. B2 refers to Cambridge's framework um, where you have A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. Uh, so B2 is more upper intermediate, which means that these are phrases that I think are, are a little more common. So hopefully you are familiar with some of them, many of them. We'll see just how much you know, because I am gonna, I'm going to present this as more of a quiz lesson. And uh, again, my goal with all of this is that you learn something new. And as we go through this, please write your answers in the chat, write your answers in the comments, because I just love hearing from you. And that's what these lessons are all about, just participating, and it's just more active learning. So uh, the, before we begin, because we're talking about building vocabulary, I did want to let you know, if you're interested in building your vocabulary and practicing your speaking skills, then there's still time if you would like to join my upcoming speaking course. It's all about helping you speak confidently, speak clearly, speak naturally. You can check out the course page. There's a lot of information about the course, um, you know, costs, time, schedule, availability. So I will link that down below in the description and I'll even put it in the chat. So, okay. So I just threw that in there right there as well. If you're interested in checking that out. So let's just, let's go ahead and jump into it uh, with our first question. Okay. So I'm going to present this to you in a few different ways. The first part, I'm going to give you the phrase, and then it's just multiple choice, you know, A, B, or C. What, what do you think? And then I'll tell you the answer. I'll talk a little bit about the phrase and try to give you a little more information about how it's used in context. Because I think when building your vocabulary and learning these phrases as well as others, um, this, uh, this is when I think you can really understand the, these phrases a bit more. So what do you think? All right. I'm seeing some great answers <laughs> in the chat. All right. Excellent. So th the correct answer is B because of a situation mentioned in that case. So let me give you an example to, so that you better understand um, the meaning. So again, if somebody says in that case, you're really referring to something that was already mentioned or discussed. So check out this little dialogue right here, like A and B. I'll have some apple juice, please. Well, sorry, we ran out of apple juice. Okay, in that case, because we've already talked and mentioned about the situation, in that case, I'll have uh, some orange juice. Okay, so just remember that you're often going to use this at the beginning of uh, a statement because you're referring to something already mentioned. You're like, well, in that case, I'm going to do this instead, or I'm going to have, um, you know, this is what I think. So just keep that in mind. You're referring to something that was already mentioned. Excellent. You guys rock that one. I feel like, again, B2, um, I, I think you guys will know quite a few of these and that's good it's always good to get review these phrases like i said they're common they're important so what do you think with respect to that's your phrase do you think it means a in connection with something b admiration for or c politely what what do you think a b or c we're talking about the phrase with respect to so I, I, this one may be maybe a, a little more challenging, but I, I feel like, I don't want to say it's maybe a little more formal, but this is one you may find newspaper articles, um, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But yes, I see a lot of great answers. The answer is A, in connection with something, with respect to. So you may also have people say with respect of, means the same thing. It's 
either one is okay. In this case, I just included with respect to. Um, so I mentioned that it's it's a phrase that maybe it's a little uh, not more formal, but I had wanted to give you an example using news articles. And in this case, not really necessarily in the article, but also headlines. So I have two headlines for you that uh, use this phrase. And again, it means in connection with something. The first one's talking about uh, Bishop Bode and Cardinal Wolke. Uh, is, is there a double standard in Germany with respect to mishandling of abusive priests? All right. So again, a double standard is referring to, um, well, you have one standard for one group of people, but then a different set of standards or expectations for another, and they talk about a double standard. So is there a double standard in connection with the mishandling? So with respect to. The other one down here, you may not be able to see it, so I'll, I'll just read it. It says, um, talking about Singapore in talks with Morocco to buy carbon credits. It says, however, both countries have to control their carbon emission levels with respect to international guidelines set to, to track climate, and then it goes uh, on and on. So it's talking about controlling those emissions in connection with or with respect to the international guidelines. All right, so in, in this case, again, it's like we're, we're change interchanging that meaning with this phrase it's a great phrase as well as this next phrase okay <laughs> might as well so what do you think uh this phrase means might as well is it a used to show uh that something is possible b used to say something is likely to happen or c used to suggest doing something might as well Okay, and I think this is a good one. Uh, sometimes people will ask, are these phrases good for like both speaking and writing? And the answer is always, it depends because some of these phrases are idiomatic. They're more idioms in which, in which case I would say it's probably better to reserve them for spoken English. Um, but others, again, you could use in writing, papers. Uh, it really just depends, like with respect to. In this case, it's a little more informal, makes me think like more dialogue. So the answer might as well. Um, a little, this one, wow, varying, different different answers. So the answer is actually C. You're, you're, you use it to suggest doing something. And I'll add a little bit to this. I couldn't fit it all in the meaning. So you use it to suggest doing something often when there's nothing better to do. And it's like, well, you know, we might as well do this. All right. So you're, you're basing this off of, like on the, the situation at hand. So think of these examples right here. Uh, somebody goes to meet a friend um, and they say like, well, you know, maybe they weren't planning to stay there. And you think, well, as long as we're here, we might as well get a drink. All right. Uh, as long as we're at this place. All right. I'm suggesting that we do something because maybe we have nothing better to do in this situation. It's almost like you're waiting for someone um, and you're like, well, we might as well do this while we're here or even in the second one, they're going to be late. So we may as well start eating. Now, you may have noticed that instead of using might, I replaced it with may. They have the same meaning. You could use either one, might as well, may as well. So I wanted to point that out in that example. So they're going to be late. We may as well start eating. So you're suggesting that you do something. And again, not always, but often because there is uh, nothing better to do. So it's a good phrase. Good phrase, especially, I think, more for, for like spoken English. The next one, okay, in a row. All right, what do you think? Remember, write your answers in the chat, in the comments. I want you guys to participate. So in a row, is it talking about A, one after another without a break, B, making a boat move through water, or C, to argue consecutively, especially loudly? What do you think this phrase means? Again, this is a B2 phrase, and don't be fooled because, again, a lot of some of the words in this phrase, they have multiple meanings. Um, I'm trying not to give you too, too much of a hint. Um, 
so what do you think? And I had said B2, this is all more upper, upper intermediate. All right, so the answer is A. We're talking about one after another without a break. So let me give you some examples. You're talking about something like happens in a row. Now, row, again, as a verb to row, that was the second meaning, like you're, you're moving through water. And then the other one, the fight loudly, that's another, um, it's a um, word with multiple meanings, but the pronunciation changes, a row. You're going to have a row, like an argument with somebody. But if you're talking about the phrase in a row, one after the other, like he's called in sick four days in a row. The team has won the championship three years in a row. Happens one after another. Often this is going to be used with some sort of like time, uh, days, months, years. And again, because you're talking about one after the other, typically you're going to use it with numbers like, well, two, three, four, five. Uh, you're not often going to hear it with like large numbers unless you're talking about maybe a smaller increment. So let me give you an example. Like, again, days, months, years. Days would be the smallest increment. But if I were to say something like, well, we have not, uh, we haven't had an accident at work now for 556 days in a row. So again, you could use it with a larger number, but typically you're going to hear people use this with, uh, you know, smaller numbers, two, three, four, five in a row. So that was the, the multiple choice portion. Now I'm going to switch things up. This time I am going to give you the phrase and I'm only going to give you maybe one or two words that are part of the phrase and I want you to guess it. And to help you guess what the phrase is, uh, I, you can use the picture. So look at this one right here. All right. What would you say? What phrase am I talking about? And of course, then I will tell you the meaning. I'll talk to you a little bit how it's used and, and give you some examples. Now, there may be there, there may actually be a couple of different words that you uh, you may be thinking of. So you take something into. Mm. What do you think? Look at the picture that that is really trying to help you decide, well, what what goes in that blank? How 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 can you best complete this sentence. Take something into mm. And the, to be perfectly honest, there are two different words that, that you can use. They have a very similar meaning. The word that I'm looking for uh, is account. To take something into account. And what this means is to consider or remember something when judging a situation. Some of you said to take something into consideration. I think that's perfectly okay. That is another phrase. For some reason, when I was looking these up, it lists this as the B2 phrase, to take something into account. And even when I checked on uh, Google Ngram Viewer to see which one is more commonly used, uh, this is the one that ends up being more commonly used uh, that you're going to find more often to take something into account. Uh, look at the example that I'm, I'm giving you down here. If I were, somebody were to say, look, look, I hope my boss takes into account the fact that I worked an extra weekend when I ask for some time off next month. So in this case, it's like I, you're saying that your boss, you hope that they consider or remember that you work some extra time, an extra weekend when they're, they're going to judge that situation about, okay, should I give this person time off? The other thing that I wanted to point out is that I followed it with the fact that. Sometimes you may use this phrase and then follow it like takes into account the fact that something happens, in which case you're talking about the situation. So I hope my boss takes into account the fact that I worked an extra weekend when I asked for some time off next month. And in this case, again, this would be interchangeable with consideration. I hope my boss takes into consideration the fact that I worked an extra weekend. You could also use that one as well. So again, it, those of you who mentioned consideration, perfectly fine. The next one, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? Very, very short, uh, short phrase right here. Behind, mm. 
And I think this is probably, uh, some of these may be a little easier. And then at the end, it is going to get um, more difficult, uh, the last part of this quiz that I have for you. So what do you think? We're talking about behind, mm, what is the phrase that uh, I'm referring to based on that picture? So th there is a blank space here, there. So it's really... Um, just one word that's missing and we're taught and that word is the word bars behind bars so you can see those bars right there it's like a, a a jail that's what it looks like because that's what the phrase is talking about if you say behind bars it just means in prison and i again i've given you some examples with some news headlines and this is i think fairly it's a fairly common phrase when you want to talk about someone who is in jail, in prison. Uh, like it says, Bannon, uh, they're talking about Steve Bannon. I don't know how many of you follow like American politics, uh, but Steve Bannon gets four months behind bars for defying 1-6 January 6 subpoena. And if you're not sure what a subpoena is, a subpoena is an order that you have to appear in court. So he defied that order and now he's going to spend four months behind bars. The next one uh, down here, it says man faces 25 years behind bars for illegally converting Bitcoin to US dollars. It's talking about a money laundering scheme. But in, in this situation, when you're talking about behind bars, yes, somebody did something illegal and they're gonna go to jail. They're gonna go to prison and spend some time behind bars. The next one, um, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I, I I don't know. I think this one uh, many of you will get. So we're talking about on, mm, and then that dot, dot, dot is like kind of a, you know, there's some information that would go in there, and then you're going to follow that with on, mm. And to help you out, <laughs> what do you think? I tried to find a picture that would best re maybe represent this phrase. I don't know if I, I did a good job. I haven't... Uh, seen any answers just yet so on mm, on mm. what do you think i think when i tell you the phrase this is a phrase that you you've probably heard before it is casual colloquial this is one that i think is great um when talking about spoken english and the phrase that i'm referring to is yes on the one hand, mm, and then you would talk about like whatever you're going to say. And then on the other hand, you have this situation. So again, in this picture, you can see it's like she's considering two different options. She has her hands up. So on the one hand, on the other hand. So this is used when you are comparing two different facts or just two opposite ways of thinking about a situation. Um, so I, I gave you an example um, <laughs> down there that is me and Emmy. On the one hand, I'd like to stay up and relax with a movie, but on the other hand, Emmy is going to wake me up early in the morning. So in this case, I, it's like I'm comparing two opposite way opposite ways of thinking. Like again, I'd love to stay up, but on the other hand, I'm I'm going to get up early, and that's not going to be very pleasant if you don't get a lot of sleep at night. So on the one hand, I'd like to stay up and relax with a movie, but on the other hand, Emmy is going to wake me up early in the morning. So that is the that is an example using this phrase. And just to, to add to that picture right there, that picture is us standing on a bridge at about, I think it's like 5.30 in the morning. We had just returned from the U.S., completely jet lagged. Emmy was getting up at like three o'clock in the morning. So spending some time inside when the sun came up, walked outside, she was riding her bike. And that picture is from, yeah, I think like five o'clock in the morning, somewhere thereabouts. The next one, this one, I didn't want to give you a word because I think it would have made it too easy. So I gave you some letters <laughs> that are, well, part of the word. And I still think you're probably going to get it just looking at the picture. So in looking at this picture, I, I, I would tell you to give you another hint, not that you probably need it. Um, you know, what noun, first noun that comes to mind and the first verb that comes to mind, what's 
what's going on. So I don't think you needed that hint in order to know the phrase that I'm talking about. Again, it is a B2 phrase. It is considered upper intermediate. And it's a phrase that I think you um, probably most likely have heard only because this is one movies, TV shows that comes up quite a bit because talking about relationships. So the phrase that I'm talking about referring to, you can see the verb break, all right, which would be that first word. The next blank would be someone because it could be any, any person and then heart. That is the noun, break someone's heart. And if you break someone's heart, it means that, well, to make someone who loves you very sad. And it's like, I, you know, if I say you broke my heart, then you're, I'm just telling you that you, you made me sad. Um, it could be for a variety of reasons. In this case, it said usually by telling some, a person that you stop loving them. And again, in that case, it doesn't mean always like you tell them, like you say it out loud. You could tell people in different ways. Um, and they could, uh, it, it, you know, you could say, oh, you, you, you broke my heart. The example I wanted to give you was from the, the movie The Godfather. Um, you, there was a line in there. He says, you know, I know it was you, Fredo. You broke my heart. You broke my heart. And this is when Michael Corleone gives him the, the kiss of death. Like he knows it was Fredo that betrayed him and, you know, their, their family. So he's like, it, you know, it breaks my heart. This was a, I think, a pretty well-known line from the movie, but a great example, again, of saying, of using this phrase, to break someone's heart. The next part of this quiz, which I think is going to be more challenging, is I am going to give you the meaning. And I just want you to think of the phrase, all right? What phrase do you think I'm talking about? And again, it's not a word. It's not just one word. It's a phrase, two or more words. So, and I think this will be a little bit more difficult, even though, again, I think many of these phrases you've heard of and you, you may be familiar with. So this is the meaning. To make the situation even more unpleasant or difficult. What phrase <laughs> could I? And, and there may be other phrases as well that have a similar meaning. I don't know if they would be B2 phrases. We're just focusing on uh, the B2 phrase. So we're talking about to make the situation even more unpleasant or difficult. What do you think? And I know, like I said, this is a little more challenging. So I'll, I'll give you a hint as you're thinking about it. There's your hint. So m mm, matters, m. Mm. So matters is going to come in the middle of the phrase. So once again, like, like I said, I'm seeing some great, great, uh, great answers. There, there could be more than one word or phrase that has this same meaning, but there's just one specific um, phrase that I'm talking about that is considered a B2 phrase, upper intermediate uh, vocabulary. So the answer in case you're wondering, is to make matters worse. To make matters worse, we can use this when referring to, well, making the situation even more unpleasant or more difficult. Think about the context that I'm giving you down here, like a wedding. There's a lot of planning that goes into a wedding. A lot of things can go wrong. And if we're just in the moment talking about it, like, oh, the wedding caterer canceled on us, and to make matters worse, the best man suddenly got sick and is in the hospital. So it's like there's now a problem because the caterers canceled. And then now the situation uh, is, be is worse. To make matters worse because the best man is now in the hospital. So you may also hear people use instead of matters, things, to make things worse. That is another phrase that you can use. Um, has the same meaning. I just wanted to point that out. But in this case, we're talking about the phrase to make matters worse. All right. So I told you, yeah, this would be a little more challenging, just getting the meaning and then trying to come up with a phrase. So the next one is it's you, you would use this phrase to show that you think or feel the opposite of what has just been stated. Okay. Think of, um, this would be a transition word. And those transition words, you can use them to um, 
talk about the order of events. You can use them to add information. You can also use them, some of these transition words or phrases, we're talking about opposite. That is a key word in here. So this is a phrase used to show that you fee think or feel the opposite of what has just been stated. There's your hint, okay? Um, on the, mm, what do you think? So it has the same meaning as uh, a word like however, but again, this is a phrase. So we're talking about the opposite and the answer, which uh, I'm seeing now, excellent, on the contrary. And I think this is a little more uh, formal. You would hear it more, you would find it in writing. Uh, you, you could hear, people would use this in spoken English as well. Probably a little more common to use a word like however. Um, but again, you could use this phrase to, to state that you think or feel the opposite. Like, um, here's my little dialogue again. Not many people, not many people like these English lessons. And I would say, hey, on the contrary, people hit the like button all the time. Okay, so that would be like my, um, my reason for thinking the opposite. Like, on the contrary, hey, people hit that like button all the time. And perhaps I'm subtly suggesting that you you hit the like button if you enjoy building your vocabulary and and learning these new phrases so please yes go ahead hit that like button but on the contrary um is a good phrase to know and there are different ways again expressing that you feel like however on the contrary um so uh, this is a good way to build your vocabulary if uh this is a phrase you're not familiar with the next one, <laughs> there's not much information uh, that I'm giving you here as far as the meaning goes. Approximately, almost. Okay, what phrase uh, would mean approximately or almost? I'll give you a hint. This is a binomial pair. I've done many lessons in the past talking about these binomial pairs, these binomial expressions. We have two words that are joined by a conjunction, and that conjunction is usually and or or. And it's a, some of them are fixed phrases, uh, like this one. And to give you, again, to kind of start, you know, jogging your memory to get you suddenly thinking of something, there's your hint. So I'm, I'm giving you the, the part of this binomial bit or. So you have mm or mm. And I really think these phrases are useful. They're very common. They're a little more um, colloquial, so I think you're more likely to use them in spoken English, but not not always. All right, so they're... Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you some more information because I see some great answers. The, the correct answer is more or less. All right, this is a binomial pair. More or less, it means approximately. It means almost. Now, it has a similar meaning to give or take, okay? Give or take would more closely resemble approximately. The only difference is that give or take, you're, you're likely to use that when talking about numbers. Um, I have, uh, well, you know, he is, you know, 60 years old, give or take a few years. So you're going to use give or take if you like talking about numbers. You can also use more or less talking about numbers as well. So in that case, they're interchangeable. But you can use more or less talking about other situations. And that's why this phrase is more common than saying give or take. So let's look at these examples. Uh, if I say she more or less started the business on her own. Okay, I'm saying like she almost did this on her own. Maybe she got a little help, but really more or less she was she did this she put this business together um, by herself i cannot use give or take in this situation because well first off we're not talking about something that's countable we're not talking about numbers so we could not use give or take here the next one where i say hey you know we're more we're, we're the same height more or less um in this case we're talking about height which would be a number so in that case you could say yeah we're the same height give or take uh, but again, more or less, it, both of them are binomial pairs. This one is more commonly used. This is our B2 phrase. Then 
We have, uh, th and I think maybe you guys uh, will get this one. So we're talking about, f this is the meaning, for a long, medium, or short period of time in the future. What phrase has this meaning? And I think it's a common one. Um, for a long, medium, or short period in the future. I'll go ahead and give you uh, a hint and put in a word for you, which I don't think you needed, uh, but there it is. So, mm, term. Okay, what, there, well, I don't want to give you another hint, but uh, there are actually three different phrases when it comes to this meaning, and I will explain why. So, we're, we're talking about the future, a period of time in the future, and the reason why the meaning is talking about long, medium, or short is because we can use each of those words in this phrase. So we're talking about the phrase in the long term, or the phrase in the medium term, or the phrase in the short term. So it really depends on the period of time that we're referring to. Most often, people are going to talk about something that's going on in the short term, which is, you know, more the immediate future, or in the long term, which is more the distant future. It's, people may use in the medium term. It depends on the context and the situation, but more often you're likely to hear people talk about something that's going to happen in the short term or in the long term. So the example that I wanted to give you um, is talking about the stock market. I say, well, the stock market may be volatile in the short term, all right, in the immediate future, but the market will certainly rebound in the long term, in the distance future. It's gonna come back, it's gonna go higher. At least I hope it is because things have been, uh, <laughs> things have been pretty bad lately. So it may be volatile in the short term, but in the long term, I am optimistic that it's going to, to rebound and come back. So these, I think, are great phrases um, to know and to use when you want to reference that, that period of time. So here, again, just to give you a little bit of review, these are the phrases that we talked about in today's lesson. These are all B2 phrases, which um, I hope maybe you learned one or two new phrases. If you knew all of them, then that is awesome. It's always good to get a little review and try to get a better understanding as to how they're used because, like I said, these phrases are certainly pretty common. And just one more plug, again, if you would like to build your vocabulary and practice um, your speaking skills, you can click on the link in the description if you want to check out my speaking course. Link is down below. So I, I really appreciate you guys joining me today. Uh, like I said, the goal with all of these lessons, especially when it comes to vocabulary, is that you just, you, you learn something new and you get something out of these lessons. Learn a new phrase, go out, try to, to listen for them, or even practice using them the next time you're having a conversation. So give some shout outs because uh, I haven't been able to mention too many names. Thank you for being here. Lolly, always great to see you. Takayo, hello. Good. Thanks for joining. Um, Julia, Ines, Maria, um, Gustav, thanks for being here. Zanat, so a lot of familiar faces uh, today. Uh, Alexandre, um, Wint, Turi, Shri, sorry if I mispronounced names, Karil, um, Thank you for joining me, and I will see you in the near future I, <laughs> because I'm, I'm going to come out with more video lessons in the short term, in the medium term, and the plan is to continue coming out with more lessons in the long term. So uh, I hope to see a, a, a lot of you. I hope that, that you will see a lot of me uh, in the future. So thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful day, and I 